The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. I have a philosophy about language that I shared with some people last night, which is, well, let, let, me, let me ask you guys a question. Does any, what, what do you think, what do you makes a good actor? Like when you, let's say you see a play or a film, what makes you sort of say, Wow, that, that actor was really good. Emotionally connected to the person. Emotionally connected to the character, you mean? Okay, they inhabit the person's mind and body. Um, but how do you know if they're emotionally connected? By being emotionally sensitive. By you being emotionally sensitive, okay. Uh, anything else, any other ideas? Yeah? If, if you as the audience are convinced by the actor. If the actor is convinced about what the actor is saying, but how do you know if the actor is convinced? What is the, I guess the question is what, so to act, okay, language people, what, is, what does act mean? What's the, the, may, the, the root of the word have to do with? I just gave you a hint. By the ability of playing different roles. Okay, so versatility, the ability of playing different roles. It's actually being the person, not playing it. Maybe. Being the person, not playing it, okay. These are all really good answers, but there's something missing. Yeah? Uh, I think the good actor is the one that we cannot say that he's acting, actually. You can't see that he's acting if it makes a good actor. I agree. So the question is, though, what, what, what is it that they do, right? To act is to do. So what are they doing that is making you believe that they're emotionally connected, that they believe what they're saying, uh, that they're not acting but being? Um, yeah, did you? Being. being. Yeah, but there are actually, yeah? They're fooling you by pretending to be something they're not actually. They're fooling you by pretending to be something they're not actually. Uh, I, actually, I would disagree with that one. I'll tell you why. Because I, don't, I think when you go to the theater, you go to a film, you ha the audience kind of has a contract with, with the actors. And the contract says, I, if you do your job, I'll believe, I'll believe you. You know, like, I mean, I don't think when you go to the, to the theater and you see something on stage, you think, you think like, wow, that's really happening. You know, uh, you, you know, uh, so it isn't actually, I think, a question of fooling, um, because there's like an agreement, but, the actor has to hold up their part of the agreement because if you do something, well, this is what I think you're sort of saying, is that uh, it has to be believable. I have to believe that what you're doing is real or uh, real enough that, that I can suspend the disbelief that we're in a, in a, in a fake setting. But, so nobody quite answered the question of what they do, but that's okay, I'm gonna move on. I'm just gonna offer some, um, <laughs> some, some, some ideas, okay? Um, and what I think, so one of the things that, that they do is they make themselves understood, right? If you, you could be really emotionally connected, you could really believe what you're doing, you could really be, but if I kind of really talk like this, and nobody actually in the back room really gets what I'm saying, right? Yeah, exactly. If I, if I mumble and I don't enunciate, I don't articulate, um, it, you don't understand what I'm saying. That's what I just mumbled. Um, so I would argue that the first thing that the actor has to do is be understood, okay? Um, which involves articulation, involves projection. Um, and I think it's the same with languages. You could know... You could memorize the dictionary. You might have a photographic memory and be able to know every word in that dictionary. You could be a whiz with grammar and be able to conjugate, you know, finish, uh, sorry, decline a Finnish noun in your sleep. But if I don't understand you, if I'm the Finnish speaker and you're speaking Finnish to me and I'm just, what? Um, well, then you've completely wasted your your, your 10,000 hours of becoming an expert, haven't you? Because you've missed the first port of call, so to speak, um, which is pronunciation, speaking well. I would rather pronounce a foreign language really, really well, enough to the point of being more than just being understood, than, than knowing the whole language. Yeah. yeah. I have an argument for that. Okay. The speaking, 
might not be the first aim of the... Uh, Can you speak calm? Okay, I'll repeat what he says. You're saying the speaking might not be the first aim. Agreed. So, this, this lecture is about speaking the language. <laughs> I freely admit. So if you're a reader, if, if like ancient Greek and Latin is your thing, feel free. If, if, I won't be offended if you leave. Can speak Latin also. You can speak Latin. There are people that speak Latin. But yeah, that, that's right. It's not, the knowledge of a language is not just speaking. But, but this, what I'm, my tools are about speaking the language. Um, and that's simply because for me personally, my, the joy of language is speaking and, yeah. and talking to people, not... In fact, I wish I could do more reading because that might keep them fresher in my head. Um, so, where was I? Uh, right, okay, so articulation, pronunciation. So, what, and then the other thing, okay, that some of you kind of hinted at with about making the, the, the person believe, um, making the audience believe, this is quite a complicated thing that lots of actors would give you lots of different opinions about, um, but I would say that that has to do with specificity. Um, making a spe doing a specific uh, choice because people, what a lot of actors make the mistake of doing is, uh, or a lot of say mediocre actors, is they sort of get up and they just want to be realistic. So they just like, how would this really happen in real life? But actually, most things that were worth making a play or a movie about, they're not just you know brushing your teeth. It's it's. Uh, it's the extraordinary moments in people's lives, or the extraordinary, you know, the extraordinary stories about ordinary people, or uh, um, extraordinary people in an ordinary situation, that kind of thing. So therefore, just kind of making like a really realistic choice, like this is how people really talk, and when they're just kind of having a conversation. But if I spend more than a few seconds like this, this is pretty boring, right, to listen to. So, so what is it then that they do? They have to be. Conf I would say confident in what they're doing, confident enough to, to go for it, to go for a weird choice or a weird, you know, hand gesture. Of course, it's appropriate. I mean, just that <laughs> in the middle of my talk is, is odd. Um, but, but in another context, it might be the thing that makes an audience member be like, oh, I, I mean, subcon they're subconscious thinking that I, I believe this. So those are so the two things that I want to kind of do a little bit of talking about is uh, is confidence and pronunciation and where they sort of meet um, and along the way some some different tools uh, for various I mean I'm going to use different languages as different examples um, but I think you'll get the idea so the first thing as far as now I, I don't want to be boring and just talk about pronunciation per se what I would rather say is and this I think somebody also alluded to this about if the actor really believes uh, or, or is convincing enough with what they're saying that they that, the, that it's part of them um, I call that owning the language so if you own the words that you say um, the audience will believe you so that's a good tool so how do you do that how do you own the words um, I have a few ideas <coughs> So again, first is, uh, we're not talking about pronunciation. If, if I, if somebody, uh, if I, if, you know, if you get to that level where people think that you're from the country or you've been in the country or something, that's, you're getting closer and closer to owning the language. I would say the ultimate, uh, the, the zenith of ownership of a language is speaking like a native. Um, and the opposite of that is, speaking with an American accent. Um, and so, you, so, so, so basically, we're trying to climb that ladder, okay? So here's a few examples. How do you, how do, you do this? Um, let's say, let's, let's start with an easy one. Uh, if you're, anybody tried to learn Arabic, Hebrew, or Dutch? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so what do those have in common? What, 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 anybody, any guesses? No, we actually don't have time for guesses. Yeah, thank you, very good, okay. <laughs> So a lot of people, especially Americans, uh, find this sound difficult to make, or um, maybe even distasteful to make. Um, but here's the thing, it's not difficult to make, and everybody who speaks English makes this sound. We just don't make it in speech. When, when do you make it? Any, anybody? Okay, spit, that's a good one. Um, I would argue, though, in, let's say, so, so, what, 
<laughs> when uh, I like spinning, um, I hadn't even thought of that. Um, but but that's good. So another one is in, when you sort of express disgust at something. Oh, oh, I can't believe I have to do it. Right, that's the sound. Everybody does that, but you just don't. You sort of all of a sudden you have to put it into language, and you think like, oh, is it? It's Baruch, Bar Baruch, but no Baruch. Of course, I, I, I over exaggerate. But what? So what I'm illustrating is making the language your own, relating a sound to a sound that is in your what I call a language environment, your native language environment. Meaning, uh, either the sound is in your language itself, but probably not in most of these cases. Otherwise, it wouldn't be difficult to make. Or it's in your your environment. You set for whatever uh, meaning. You know, the part of the the phonological system of, of expression um, where you come from. So ugh is a good is a good example. So what that suddenly bars people is okay, so I you can actually make ugh. the question is doing it in in the while speaking. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, a similar example is for foreigner foreigners who are learning English, uh, a common difficulty in pronunciation is the TH sound. Think, thought, right? I mean, I, I'm trying, yeah, you, you get tink, you get fink, you get sink. Uh. And, and now this one is easier, okay? Shame on all of you who, are, who can't do, th because I can show you how to make, I can't show you what I'm doing with my throat when I say, Ugh. you can't see, but I can, li I can say, do this, ready? Everybody do this. You're all, everyone in this room can do that. If you have a tongue and you have teeth and you can breathe, <laughs> you can make a, th so what's the problem? Why, 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 why is it all of a sudden when you have to speak, you can't do it? I'll tell you what I, my, this is my theory anyway. Let's connective, just say. Connective speech. What? Connective speech. This is the problem. Yeah, yes, that is. But that, that I would say there's a slightly different issue there, which I might get to, but I, I probably won't because I think I'm running out of time. But um, the, uh, um, the the issue, I mean, it's related to connected speech, which is that if if let's say French is your first language, okay, um, you're <laughs> so you're as far as I know, for most French people, in when you speak French, your tongue never protrudes from your teeth. Your tongue never crosses. That's like a barrier that the tongue won't go there. It, because and so. so <laughs> I thought of a really awful joke that I'm going to share. Uh, and so, now, as an American person, I mean, if you're Greek, uh, Castilian, Spanish, or, or American, or an English speaker, you don't have this, this problem. But what I would, what I, am, I imagine it, therefore, to be like, if somebody told, uh, told you to pronounce a T on your lips, like, puh, you know, pebe, pebe, I went pebe, you know, it, it feels bizarre. It feels like your tongue is going where it, it shouldn't, um, and and so I, so something in your I think that something in your subconscious is kind of being like don't stick your tongue out while you speak it's disgusting because in in French it, it, it may well be, um, and so you, there's like a slight aversion to, to doing that, uh, but it's not the difficulty is not in making the sound, right. Okay, a couple of other examples that get progressively more difficult. Um, uh, as will my phone, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, here's a good one. Uh, German. So, so, the, so now I'm moving on to ones that might not necessarily be somewhere obvious in your linguistic environment. Um, so for English speakers, is a is a difficult one. Uh, a lot of people just say ich, or which ends up being Yiddish, or ich, which ends up being Dutch, um, but they don't get the ich. So where where does it come from? Um, what I tend to tell people if I'm trying to help them with with this sound, if uh, if you think of um, what happens when somebody you know is put something like on the edge of the table and like that, let's say, and then, then they do a gesture and it's about to fall and everybody goes, <laughs> right? So they're going, <laughs> now, if you do that and you, but you keep, keep the same mouth shape, the same face, so freeze at the end of that sound. <laughs> and then let the air go out the same way it came in. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay? So you feel, you, you, and the idea is feeling in your mouth where, where that passage of air goes. Um, and if you can feel it in one direction, you can feel it in the other. Um, okay, another one that I like is uh, Arabic. People are learning Arabic? Have you met the ayin? Okay. Uh, so, the ayin, how do, how do you get to that? Um, this took me a long time. The first thing I ever read about ayin was take a, your finger and stick it down your throat slowly until your gag reflex uh, comes in. And those are the muscles you need to take command of. And I thought, uh, okay, uh, so, I, so I found the muscle, but how, how do I use the muscle? Because the point of a reflex is it's involuntary. Um, and I, had a, I, I did uh, Middle Eastern studies in university and I had a Lebanese teacher, who professor, who was giving a lecture in English about something, and he got really passionate, uh, and suddenly uh, he, he kind of over-emphasized, over-articulated, um, I think it was Ismaili, <laughs> and, he, and he repeated it several times, and, and it, to the point where in my head it was like, it's, it, it's the sound that people, when he stopped anyway on the sound, it's the sound that, uh, that American children might make if they're trying to pretend to be a dog growling like <laughs> and no I would I never would have thought it's not obvious because if you were to write for example the you know and the dog growled what's the letter we use R, R. R right but when you hear you know A'ila, I don't hear an R there but in this moment I heard I heard something similar and I kind of realized actually and now I know this uh, to be true, that it's this, it is the same muscle that you're using to go and to make an iron. So, so okay, once you kind of get that, then <clears throat> what can you do to help yourself into the iron? Start with a, a sound that comes closer to you. So start with the R. So if the word is ra'ila, start by saying ra'ila. Growl, growl, and really growl the R. Now you're not. You can't, it, it takes practice, so don't. Uh, if, if you can't do it by the end of the talk, don't. It's not a failure. Um, but so you start with that, and then at some point you just think to yourself, what? Okay, what? So what's the difference? Uh, well, I guess you can't realize it till after you've done it. But once you've done it, you realize that when you're growling, your tongue, your tongue is doing this kind of curling back. If you flatten it and do the same thing, okay, and uh, no, the thing is with this sound, you can't actually sustain that sound. You have to uh, release it. So you put a word, you put it into a word. So if you start, but then eventually you flatten your tongue. <laughs> means family. Um, so, uh, so the these what I'm talking about that I hope you get the gist of is is not to approach a, a language with this like s sense of an outsider that oh God, there's these sounds that don't exist in my language and how you know what I'm how am I going to tackle this um, but but rather to to make it related in any way that you can to 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 your own language now before somebody asks about clicks. I don't know any languages with clicks. I don't know how to make them. I've, I don't re so so I can't really uh, advise on that. But the point is, every person, you know, and we all have this. If, if you're a human being, you have the same system, and you can make these sounds. And what I would argue is, do it. Don't approximate. Don't say like, oh, you know, I'll just uh, do do the best I can because um, because that's the equivalent to the actor mumbling, essentially, right? Um, and quickly, I have w another sort of little the interactive part, but I want to say one thing about about um, th this concept of articulating and actors. Um, there is a slight difference between stage acting and film acting. Uh, not not much, because I, I would say acting is acting. But in the theater, um, you've got a huge you know room, a huge space, and somebody all the way down there has to hear every word. Uh, or you, sorry, you have to maybe do more to, to be heard. Um, and so when you're rehearsing, um, you may often over articulate and you may spit out your T's uh, in a way that you wouldn't in connected speech and therefore you wouldn't uh, in a film. 
Um, and I think it's useful to think of yourself as a language learner, uh, as, as being a stage actor first. Before you before you move into film, because it's easier to do that than go the other way around, um, and uh, so I think a lot of people try to immediately, you know, you know, like they hear when they hear French people say, you know, uh, meaning instead of je ne sais pas, they so they try to just do that. But actually, I don't know. You might have had this experience, but sometimes when you hear somebody with a foreign accent, and I don't know why this is, but when they make when they make those uh, that connected speech like a native, you some, you actually can miss it because you're not quite either. I don't know if it's that your brain is not expecting that level of connected speech, um, or uh, they don't quite get it exactly right and, and it's usually something you know some vowels are, are lost or some consonants are lost so therefore you've missed what they what they say which is not to say don't do it in fact that as I said before that's the goal to get there but I think in order to get there first you have to pronounce everything uh, similar to like if you're learning Arabic or Hebrew let's say and you need to eventually read without vowels don't start making flashcards without vowels because um, you you just you cause yourself unnecessary confusion if you learn them with the proper vowels and you look at them enough times eventually you won't need the vowels anymore so so uh, the point is to um to think think like a stage actor over articulate first um to to get that muscle memory to get so once you've made these connections for yourself overdo it and this is another similarity with actors and, and say believability is they overdo it. If you go to a rehearsal, even a Meryl Streep or a, a, fan, a fabulous actor, if you watch them rehearse, you might, they'll be bad first. And this is what you have to do. So this comes, I mentioned confidence at the beginning. You have to be brave enough to be bad. Um, now it's easier to be bad in the comfort of your own home in front of the mirror and I would encourage you to, to be bad. Um, but try also to be bad with people, uh, you know, when you're speaking, um, because that's I think what 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 prevents people eventually from really making themselves understood well is that they're not comfortable uh, with 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 going there, or they might be uh, afraid of offending because they might be doing like a caricature, or frankly, there's ego involved, I think. You might think, oh, this person's gonna think that, I, that I'm bad. Um, so uh, what do I mean by like going too far, you know, in say, adopting the musicality of a language, uh, and, and some are more musical than others. I mean, an easy example is Italian, right? That people, when they're the stereotypical um, kind of using your, your hands and your body and, and getting into it, and um, and it sounds ridiculous uh, if you overdo it. Let me, let me just, I'll give you a short example uh, of overdoing it um, versus underdoing it. Um, maybe some of you will recognize this opening of a German poem, so I'm going to read it um, three times. Wer reitet so spät durch Nacht und Wind, a sister Vater mit seinem Kind? Er hat den Knaben wohl in dem Arm, er fasst ihn sicher, er hält ihn warm. So, what did I say that was wrong? Well, I mean, what did I pronounce specifically wrong? I, I wasn't, yeah, okay, I pronounced the R, uh, but I would say overall, uh, so uh, one more, even if I said, uh, um, okay, it's closer for sure, but it's still, I'm just because I'm not putting any kind of effort, right? So let me do the opposite. Wer reitet so spät durch Nacht und Wind? Es ist der Vater mit seinem Kind. Er hat den Knaben wohl in dem Arm. Er fasst ihn sicher. Er hält ihn warm. I'm overdoing it, right? It's a bit like a, a, a caricature, okay? But but you but overdo it so that you can come off it. And if you and the thing with it's the same principle in acting. If you overdo it a bunch of times. And then you then you just get on stage and you forget about it, okay? And now this, here's the moment of truth because this is not going to be flawless. But here we go. Wer reitet so spät durch Nacht und Wind? Es ist der Vater mit seinem Kind. Er hat den Knaben wohl in dem Arm. Er fasst ihn sicher, er hält ihn warm. Not so bad. 
I know, and the thing is that what it what 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 you have to do to make that perfect, I would say, is live in the language. You, there's no way around that. Uh, I don't think somebody listening to that would say, "Oh, why he's German." Um, but I think I think if I spent a week just speaking German, with doing this, overdoing it, and then relaxing, actually, this has happened to me before uh, in in Germany, in Brazil. People, after a while, they think I'm from the country, and I think it has to do with trying really hard to to overdo it. Oh, I have to end at 10:50, don't I? <laughs> I didn't get to do my my experiment. Um, do it anyway. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'll do it really quickly. So, uh, people learning Chinese. Yeah. Okay. Or speak Chinese. Okay. So here. So this is a, a, another example of just trying to own own your language. Um, uh, intonation. Right. This is the one thing that that. Especially English speakers say, but I don't hear the tones. I don't. I don't get it. So, so what I need, I need a volunteer to ask me a yes or no question. This is where you're going to write stuff down. So somebody, somebody ask me a yes or no question. No, in English. <laughs> yeah. Are you American? Okay. So um, this is how this works. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna say part of an answer and you're going to fill in the blank, okay? And I'm purposely, no, I'll tell you to close your eyes and then open them when I give the answer. So everybody close your eyes, okay? Uh, Claudia, ask me the question again. Are you American? Question is, are you American? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's my answer. So now you have to write down if there's something that comes after that. And it could be uh, it could be another clause, it could be punctuation, it could be you know nothing. Okay, uh, somebody give me a different question. Uh, everybody close your eyes. A yes or no question. Do you like Chinese food? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what would come after that? Yeah. Another question. Are you single? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so my answer is, yeah. So what comes after that? And the last question. Um, do you like Berlin? Close your eyes. Do I like Berlin? Yeah. Okay, so here's the experiment. Did did you all come up with like different, uh, pretty different answers for filling in the rest of that? Yep. So, for example, what did somebody say after the first one? What what did you fill in? You know, but I was born in Sweden. Okay, but I was born in Sweden. What? But I don't live there. But I don't live there. Another one. But I grew okay. So everybody, the, great. Everybody put everybody. Their second class started with but. Okay. Um, the second question. What? Anybody have a, an answer for that or? And I also like Vietnamese food. And I also like Vietnamese food. Anybody else? I usually do. Okay. Anybody else? I absolutely love it. No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, want to go grab some? Okay. Um, the, the, the third one? Most of the time. Most of the time? I forgot what the question was. Oh. <laughs> Good, yeah. And I would like to meet somebody. And I would like to meet somebody. Okay. Why? Why? Who else put why? Okay, good. 
Uh, and the last one. Nothing. 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 So like a period or an exclamation? Okay. Great! You guys, you made my experiment really good. Um, for me anyway, I don't know if it works for you, but what I just illustrated, if you didn't already figure it out, I answered the question with the same word, yeah, in the four tones of Mandarin. Oh, I'm not a Mandarin speaker, okay? I don't, I'm not, so again, this is imperfect, but basically, as best as I could gather from my Pimsleur program <laughs> from like five years ago, there was, there was, yeah, 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 right? Four tones? Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so, so the point is that, is, is that there's no, there is no reason even with tones not to be able to own them. It's just that in, in, our, in our language, uh, the tone doesn't change the, the content meaning of the word, it changes the contextual meaning of the word. Everybody, a lot of people put but after the first one, a lot of people said nothing after the last one because you understood something from the intonation. And if you can understand something from the intonation, then you can understand if it's a different concept. Uh, altogether. So these are the kind of tools that I'm talking about in terms of m making it your own. Is You have to be creative, think outside the box, think about how how can I get my my myself around, how can I rather, rather than thinking how do I get into this, how do I get this into me, how do I get this around me, and I'm very sorry that that's all that I have time for. So I have more to say about next time. Thank you very much. You've been very, very good audience. I appreciate it. Thank you.